want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. you to turn to the book of Matthew. We're going to the book of Matthew on today, and as you can see, well, our church, we dress down all the time, so um, it's nothing different for us to dress down. Um, so today is Super Bowl Sunday, and so I promise you, if you give me about 30 minutes of your time, <laughs> we want to make sure that we've been able to watch the Super Bowl. So I haven't been able to keep up with um, you know, football this year from moving and working and doing ministry and things of that nature. Uh, but how did the Rams and the Bengals get to be in the Super Bowl? Like, how did that end up happening? So, you know, hey, listen, we want to tune in tonight. I got to see how these two teams play, and we're just going to have some awesome fun in Jesus' name. It just be me and my wife. But hey, we still have fun. We love to celebrate. And I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to our Sunday afternoon celebration service. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Oh, if you want to stop it. Yeah. Oh. Uh -oh. Huh? Yes. That's okay. Yeah, just take a look right here. Oh, yes. Yeah, we got technology stuff going on here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we said we're going to have church. We're going to let nothing hold us back. So listen, the book of Matthew, chapter 6, we're going to start at uh, verse 5 through 8. Um, actually, my iPad is not acting the way that I want to do, so we're going to start at verse um, 9. So Matthew, chapter 6, we're going to start at verse 9. Uh because this is not doing what I wanted to do. So that's fine. So Father God, I thank you, Lord, for these, your people, God. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that is here. I want to thank you, Lord, for everyone who is watching us by uh, Facebook Live. I want to thank you, Lord, for everyone who is watching us also on our YouTube channel. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for just doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think, oh God. Father God, we pray right now, God, that you will increase, God, and we decrease, God, for it's not about us, but it's all about you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I need somebody to type in the comments, amen, amen, amen. Come on, I need you to type in the comments and say amen. So listen, the Bible says here, if you, uh, in the King James Version of the Bible, uh, you know, the, uh, Jesus is giving instructions on how to pray. pray. So it says, uh, uh, our Father, everybody know, you know, our Father who art in heaven, how be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And everybody, so I'm going to go through that um, passage of scriptures of how we uh, ought to be able to uh, pray. Because it's important for us to pray. So we've been praying uh, with our ministry here. We've been doing 40 days of fasting and praying. I believe that that fasting ends this Wednesday um, night, and so then we want to have a big celebration, so if you are available on Wednesday night at 10 o'clock p.m., yeah. type in the comment box, 10 p.m. 10 p.m., we're going to go live on, well, not live on Facebook, we're going to be on Zoom, uh, and then we want to just be able to bless the people who have been uh, fasting and praying. Um, you know, the Bible tells us that these things only come out by fasting and praying. And I have been believing God for signs, miracles, and wonders to come about. I've been believing God for uh, supernatural healing, miracles, and deliverance to come about. And there have been some awesome testimonies that have been coming about due to our fasting and our praying. And so during this uh, time right now, God just was speaking to me and said that, please give the instructions 
on when you're fasting, when you're praying, what you're doing. So Matthew 6, starting at verse 9, it says, pray like this. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He said, our beloved Father, and I'm reading from the Passion Version of the Bible, and I have a few different versions I'm going to be reading from. But it says, our beloved Father, dwell in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. In the New Living Translation, it says, our Father in heaven, may, may your name be kept holy. And so I want you to put down for point number one, that we have to give God his glory. Yes, come on. How, how be that name means how holy are you, oh God? And then we have to give God, we have to acknowledge him that he is holy. And the Bible says because he is holy, then we are to be holy as well. We give him praise and thanksgiving. The Bible says the enter to his gates with thanksgiving and enter to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And I'd like to throw in there for you are good and your mercy endureth forever. On, and so sir. the Bible says that that's in the New Living Translation, the King James Version. It says that uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's Matthew uh, 6 and 10 in the King James Version of the Bible. So the next verse says, in the Passion Version, Manifest, I like that. Yeah, manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Just as it is in heaven. Manifest. And so a lot of times, you know, manifest actually means to, to make it happen. Manifest, make it happen. Manifest your kingdom realm. And so we, we have to understand that we live in, in two different realms. We live in the natural realm that we see. I can see the, uh, the, the chairs, and I can see the lovely flowers. I can see the soundboard, and I can see uh, the podium. Uh, so we live in a natural realm, but we also live in a spiritual realm realm. That is the realm that we cannot see. And a lot of people say what happens in the spirit, what happens in the natural also happens in the spirit. So we have to pray and ask God, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. And during this time right here, it's a time that you ought to be able to say, God we pray that your will, that your purpose, that your plans and desires be fulfilled on earth just as it is in heaven. Now, I don't know how much study you have been doing about heaven, but I can tell you right now, heaven is a place that I'm looking forward to. Heaven is a place that they say that the streets are filled with gold. Hallelujah. And, uh, and if God created streets that's made with gold and houses and mansions and many other things, then I believe that God wants us to be able to have those things here on you earth as well. Pastor. There's the, there, the Bible says there is no shadow of turning in heaven. That means there's no darkness. That means that there's nothing that's going to stand in your way. There's no shadow. I see my shadow against the wall. There's no shadow. There's no darkness. And so on today, I'm believing prophetically that there's no darkness that's going to be in your, in your life. That there's going to be no darkness that's going to hold you back. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and thou rod in thy staff, it comforts me. There is no shadow. Yes, come on, sir. So we pray. God, let your will, let your plans, let your purpose, let the desires be fulfilled on earth as it is in heaven. He told Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew who you want. I knew the plans that I had for you before you was even conceived in your mother's womb. And those are plans to uh, keep you 
not to hurt or harm you. Yes. Hallelujah. So the Bible says uh, in a New Living Translation, may your kingdom come soon and may you and may your will be done on earth as it yes. is in heaven. Uh, and then King James Version says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. The reason why I like to show different verbiage and different uh, translations is because it, it certain things just jump out to me. And so going back to the Passion Version of the Bible, it says, We acknowledge you as our provider of all who we need yes, each and every day. The Bible, this is a Matthew 6 and 11. Give us this day our daily bread. It says in New Living Translation, give us today the food that we need. We have to acknowledge him as our source. Yes, sir. He is our source. He is our provider. He is the one that actually will provide things for us that we need. And we have, when we pray, we have to say, God, you are our source. Yes. You are our provider. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes. Not only do we depend on natural food, we also need spiritual food every day. So this is the reason why we have to make sure that we are feeding ourselves the word of God yes. every single day. We pick up our Bibles every single day. Feed ourselves the word of God every single day because men should not live just by bread alone, but every word. So I'm saying this prophetically. And one of the reasons why you may be suffering, one, one of the reasons why you may be hurting in your life is because you're not feeding yourself. You're spiritually starving. Woo, come on, sir. Give us this day our daily bread. God, you're our provider spiritually as well as naturally. I thank you, God, for providing food. And when it, and when God led the children of Israel uh, to the land, uh, when he led them out of Egypt, and it was in their uh, wilderness, and it was, uh, uh, when it was uh, in a wilderness state, God said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to provide for you. And he said that uh, you're going to receive manna and quail every day. And the structures of the Lord was to make sure that you only take what you need. Take what you need for the day because it's going to spoil the next day. Yes. And it's going to spoil the next day. And so that's the reason why we have to um, get into our word every single day is because Ooh. the word from yesterday was spoiled. Yeah, it's still good, but it's spoiled. Said that every single day you got to get a word on the inside of you. Every single day, and so if you have the Bible app, every single day the the, the word the, uh, they'll send you a, a scripture for the day. A lot of people think that you got to read and read and read verses and verses and verses every single day. Get that one scripture. Now let me. This isn't a part of my notes, but let me say this. Listen, I remember a time when I was in Bible college, and I said, God, I said I need a word. And he had me to go over the one scripture, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? With the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh. They stumble and fill. You have to understand one thing that the Bible says that all of us, no weapon that's formed against you shall not prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, God said he already condemned. So there's some people out there that may be hating on you. There may be some people out there that may be talking about you. But God said, leave it to me because I've already taken care of it. And the children of Israel were having manna and quail every single day. They didn't even know what manna they said, what is this? What is manna? Still, still to this day, we still don't know what the world manna is. My God. What is manna? And so I remember, this is when we started, me and my wife started, uh, when we first got married, uh, one of the things that, I remember I came home from work one day, and you know, we had something to eat, I can't remember what to prepare, but she began to cry because she was like, this is not the dinner that I want to prepare 
for my husband. You know, she, I, 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 you know, I guess she was looking for me, sure that we had steak and potatoes every single day and collard greens and cornbread and everything else every single day that, you know, we had these uh, old orbs every single day. <laughs> you know, I don't know what she was expecting, but uh, her, her expectancy was at a level where, uh, where hey, listen, I'll say this, that we're going to get to. May not be there yet, but we're going to get to that. So, I said to her, I said, honey, I said, one thing that you have to learn is that we have food. Yeah. We have food. That's it. That's it may it. not be the food that we want to eat, but thank God we got something to eat. Listen, I don't care if I have to eat oodles and noodles every single day. I don't care if I have to cut up a potato and make french fries every single day. I don't care what it is that we have to do or make or whatever food it is. It could be chicken and grits for all I care. But as long as there's some food in the house, it's manna to me. You preach it, sir. What is it? I don't know, but it tastes good. Give a little salt and pepper, put a little cayenne pepper on there. Go ahead and put some garlic powder and some onion powder on there. Listen, I know how to make a, a, a minced meat out of a meal. <laughs> ah, 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 listen to me! Jesus! Let me allow you to take away. Uh, that was my golden uh, nugget for the day. Uh, until this day, uh, I think I'm, I'm, this, I'm preaching all this stuff. Scrolling the, this, so much stuff, and I said, "All right, so let, let me go to the next line." And I promise y'all that we're gonna be getting out of here real fast tonight. Join us again next week, 3 p.m. same time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it says here, "Forgive us." The Passion Version of the Bible. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who want us. Now I might just have to park it here for just one second because a lot of times when we pray, you know, we pray, God forgive me of my sins. Forgive me about the things that I've done. Forgive me the way that I acted. Forgive me the way that I spoke. Forgive me about the way that my mind has been thinking. God forgive me. But we never turn around and say, God forgive them for hurting me. God forgive them for touching me. God forgive them for molesting me. God forgive them. My God, come on, come on. You're teaching good, sir. It says here that we ask God for forgiveness. Sometimes in life, we hold on to things that's holding us back. What's holding you back in this very hour? What's holding you up, kind sir? What's holding you up, Miss Ma'am? What is that thing that's holding you up in your life? You say you want to get married, but you're not allowing people. You're not, you said, because Jenny hurt me, I'm never again going to allow nobody to enter into that place ever again. Yes. And I'm here to tell you that you're wrong for that. Because if we serve a God that forgives, it says in the Bible, the manner that you forgive is also the manner that he shall forgive. And so although Johnny may have messed over you, maybe Johnny has uh, left you with three kids. Maybe Johnny was, went out, <laughs> he probably went out and left you for some other woman or some other man. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, Pastor. <laughs> my, my, my wife, she said that she said it's hurtful yeah. for a man to leave you for another woman. My God, come on, preach. But what do it feel like for the man to leave you for another man? Woo. What is that? You can't compete. You can't compete. Listen, but God is a God of not only a second chance, My God. but he is a God of another chance, another chance. And you can be forgiven. Yes, he God. can be forgiven. Everyone can be forgiven. Yes, All you God. have to do is ask God for forgiveness. Woo. 
And the Bible says this. It says, and release it. Ha, ah, my God. So you know that when, you, when you're praying and you ask God to forgive you of your sins, that you're supposed to release it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody type in the comments, release it. Release it. Come on, I need to see it. Type in the comments, release it. Release it. Release it. Because somebody, I, I told you I'm going to park right here for a second. You need to release it. It says in the Amplified Version of the Bible, and forgives us our debts. Come on, come on. Because you've got to understand, I don't even know if I have time to even talk about this, but when Adam and Eve sinned, there was a debt that we had to pay, but because of Jesus Christ, we didn't have to pay the debt because the debt was already paid for us. You better come on. Forgive us our debts. Yes. And so this is one of the reasons why sometimes you got to praise God on credit. Huh? My God, because uh, there's some things that I've done in my life. Uh, there's some situations that have happened in my life. That I'll tell you right now, I should have paid for it. I should have been in jail. I should have been locked up. I should have been tied up and tangled up in somebody else. But I'm here to tell you right now that God said that he When we pray, forgive us our debts as we have forgave our debtors. And until the end of my verse says, letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. My God, my God, my God. I wish I had half a church to be able to shout with me right there. Jesus. Jesus, let go of the hurt. Let go of the pain. Let go of the resistance. Hallelujah. And the Bible says this, that rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. Listen, I'm closing with these little last little verses here. Yeah, 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 it yeah. says here, right here, and lead us down to temptation, but then we're from the evil one. This is my prayer right here. And so a lot of times when we pray, we just have to say, Lord, help me. Help me, God, in my mind. Help me, God, in my spirit. Help me, God, with my thoughts. Help me, God, with my mind. Help me, God, with my heart. Help me, God, with my children. Help me, God, with my parents. Help me, God, with my wife. Help me, God, with my husband. Help me, God, with this school. Help me, God, with my business. Help me, God, hallelujah, for the things that's coming to attack me, things that come to distract me. I said this past week that every single distraction, you got to say, God, help me, God, with these distractions. God, don't allow no stony block to come. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. It says, God, me. And right now, you need to type in the comment section, Lord, help me. The old song said, Lord, help me to hold out while my change is coming. God, help me in this situation. God, help me in this circumstance. God, help me to let go of the forgiveness. God, help me to forgive Johnny. God, help me to forgive Rebecca. God, help me to forgive Tony. God, forgive Elizabeth. God help me to forgive. Hallelujah. And change my heart. Change my mind. Change my spirit. Change the things that's within me. Change me, God. Because I don't want to be the same, oh God. Father God, I pray, God, to allow me to be able to forgive because while I'm looking, while I'm looking, while I'm looking, while I'm looking, into your eye sockets, when I'm looking into you, while I'm looking, hallelujah, into you, I should be worried about the Lord in my eye versus the dust in your eye. God, forgive me for every sin. God, forgive me for every transgression. And not only forgive me, but allow me to release the resentment. Release the stronghold. Release God. Lead me not into the temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. A lot of
lot of times we could be saved, but a lot of times we hold ourselves back, prophetess. Yes. We hold ourselves back. <laughs> That's what we do. We hold ourselves back. Woo! A lot of times it's not the enemy, it's us. And we have to be able to say, God, help. I like the son of Christ King with some perks. Help my unbelief. Come out. Hallelujah. Help me, God. Help me, God. A lot of times that's all you need to do is say, help me, Lord. Help me. And then finally it says here that uh, for, uh, leads not to temptation, but delivers from, from the evil. For you are the king who rules with power. And glory forever. Amen. End in a prayer. Uh -huh. You have to end your prayer with some praise and some worship. Yes. Hallelujah. You have to end your prayer with some praise and some worship. Yes. And so it's quite funny to me that God instructs us to be able to start number one by entering into his gates with thanksgiving and entering into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, bless his name. And then he said, end the prayer with some praise. Hallelujah. And some worship. Some of you know that you can praise anything. I, I can look at my wife, I say, huh, that's a nice brooch, that's a nice necklace, everything you got on. Uh, that, that's offering that person praise. But worship, when it comes down to worship, you can only worship the Father. You can only worship God. And so in this time right now, when you get to this point of prayer, you have to be able to give God some praise and some worship. Uh, so make sure that you give God some praise and worship. And lastly, it says this in, in verse 15. It says, Jesus said, and when you pray, make sure you forgive the faults of others so that your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you withhold forgiveness from others your father withhold forgiveness from you and i don't know about you but on tonight i want to pray and ask god for anybody anything that may have held me back i want to be able to let that thing go right now in the name of Jesus. So, for those of you who are watching us right now live on Facebook, I want you to be able to just type into the comment section, Lord, help me to forgive. Lord, help me, Lord, help me. to forgive and to release. This is what we ought to do while we're praying. This is what we ought to do while we're praying. Lord, Help me to forgive and to release. Honey, can you join me on a platform here? Listen, we're going to end this service again. I know some of you probably left out and came back in um, during the offering time, but just in case you came in a little later, uh, I want to just remind you again that please give. Give it to the ministry. We want to thank you so much uh, for giving to the ministry. Uh, thank you so much for those of you who have joined us live right there on Facebook. Hallelujah. So, Father God, we pray right now, Lord, that in the master's name of Jesus, that, Father God, that we will learn to pray. That, Father God, that you have given us the instructions on how to pray. Father God, that we will to acknowledge you, God. And Father God, that we will learn to forgive and forgive others, oh God. In the master's name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, we say, Lord, that you are a wonder. You are a wonder in our soul, oh God. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing for One Touch Ministry, so oh God. We thank you, Lord, for our partners and our friends right now in the name of Jesus. For those of you who are watching, thank you so much, oh God. Thank you for my cousins who are currently watching. Thank you, Lord, for our partners and friends. Hallelujah. We thank you. I pray an extra special blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On those who have sown and those who desire to sow but just couldn't give. Father God, we thank you, Lord, 
Ah! 
Yes, Lord. Because you're worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Yes. You are worthy. And if you are in need of someone to help you to lead you to Christ, you yes. need discipleship. Contact us. Yes. Inboxes, let us know. Because we have so many people who say, I desire yes. to get to know more about God, but where do I start? Come on. See, a lot of pastors are preaching and teaching the word that is beautiful. But you never tell anybody the secret to start out. Oh, you tell people how to get houses, cars, and lands. Yeah. But you never tell them how to get started. Yeah. Hush, the robots. Come on, come on. I had to learn that. I know what I want, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. I know I want this big house on the hill. Yeah, yeah. I know I want that fancy car. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. where do I start? And don't come by osmosis. Right. And don't fall. He said, when I should have been dead and gone. Come on. But because I praise God, because there was some credit. Come on. There's some credit. I had good credit with God. Come on. to sow your seed. I want to challenge you. And the only reason why I'm challenging you is because someone has sold it already. Mm. Someone else had already sold it. Okay, okay, okay. And, and I'm not going to call that person's name. They sold it already. And when they sold that $25 seed, yes. I heard God say, tell the people, challenge them to sow 25 My God. I challenge you today just to sow 25 my God. I challenge you to take that leap of faith yes. and say, Father, I'm just going to sow 25. Yes. You may say, I don't even know these folks. You may not even yes. know me. That's all right. That's all right. But if you know God, then you know the Spirit of God rests inside of me, my husband and myself. So, so I challenge you to just go ahead and sow the 25. Don't even look to the left. Yeah. Don't look to the right. Yeah. Don't look about what's going, what's ahead. Yeah. Just go ahead and sow. And I believe God. I trust God on your behalf that God will give you the miracle. God will bless you triple what you sow. Not double, but triple of what you sow. Meaning, triple means three times. Meaning that you have got a son and the Holy Ghost. Meaning, my God, you get your 25 back up and you still got $50 to play with. I'm trying to tell you, just take the leap of faith and just sow. Uh huh. Sow it. Man of God who already sold his 25, I want to just let you know that God is about to give you a miracle. Yes, yes. I see you moving. I see your feet moving. I see you walking. I see you taking longer steps. I see you standing up even longer. I see you even up. I see you reading your word even more. I see God pouring into you even the more. My God from I see God blessing you. I see miracles, signs, and wonders. What the doctor said would not be done shall be done. In Jesus' name. Listen, God bless each and every one of you. May heaven smile upon you. We thank you from here, from One Touch Pastor. Come on. From One Touch Ministries, we bless you. Bless you. We praise God for you. We thank God once again for Pastor Shannon. Pastor Shannon. Hallelujah, this great man of God. 
We praise God for you. We ask God to fill you back up. In the mighty name of Jesus, what you gave out in the name of Jesus, you shall be filled. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Sasha the Roboco, fill up God. Sasha the Roboco, from head to toe, in Jesus' name. We bind up the head of the enemy right now. We come against everything that's not like you. Every doctor, every doctor. Right now, we come against it. God, we thank you for your peace, your love, your joy that rests upon him right now. Fill him up in Jesus Christ's name. And everybody say amen. amen. God bless you.